It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Browns and the Cardinals. And it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Valley of the Sun at State Farm Stadium here in Glendale. It's certainly hot outside here in the desert, but somehow this Cardinal crowd turned up the heat a moment ago. They were in a frenzy as their team emerged from the tunnel, and the Cardinals are set to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. Just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway here on EA Sports. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. On first and 10, Warner. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. I think that's how this defense is going to need to play these tight ends. Again, get right up on them and stay physical. And that paid off on that play, helping force that incompletion. Again from the 20 after the incompletion, here's second and 10. Order to throw. Airing this one out for Fitzgerald. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. A big play that time through the air. 34 yards. Execution was one of their watchwords leading up to this one. And on that play, able to execute brilliantly here on this opening drive. Scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Warner from the gun. And he's taken down. This will be a brown sack. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. Second and 20. Tackle, tackle. 
First carry of the ball game now. It's C.J. Anderson. Yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Warner. Screen play, Anderson. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and it'll bring up fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Here comes the Cardinals punter now. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here are the Browns under head coach Kevin Stefanski. And they'll be let out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. And some room to maneuver. And they worked this well upfield across the 45. You know, I have a pretty good friend, Charles Davis, who tells me that when he sees plays like that, strong runs to the right, reminds him of the 1960s Green Bay Packers. Boy, those were the days back when the fullback actually carried the ball as well as blocked. Then you had a halfback. He had pulling guards, guys who could get out and run. And you can hear the great coach saying it back then. So we get a seal here and a seal here, and we run this play right in the alley. They'll run it here with Brown. And he'll get it across midfield and down to the Cardinal territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll set up to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. He'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got a boat down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. So first and 10 now from the 30. Running right, here's Brown. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. But what I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Now they'll try to take advantage of that offsides call. Here's first and five. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He completes this one to Mack. Touchdown, Browns! 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Browns have taken the early lead.
An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 7-0. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taking it about the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. To throw Warner. He sets to fire deep. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. As much as I praise teams for being true to who they are, in this situation, I wonder if maybe they outguess themselves a little bit. Third down seemed like an obvious passing situation. They chose to run it and then get anywhere close to the first down. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as he'll come on to kick this one away. So holding there on the return, and that'll back him up to start the next drive. Yeah, that's a pretty easy call right there, partner. I think when the officials look in their manual and see the expression, jersey getting pulled, that's a flag coming out every time. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. Now back to throw. He'll hit Jackson complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, it's Brown. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. Now it'll be third down. Look 
looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. They'll set up a throw. And that is incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Just a two-yard return there following a go. punt of go. 48. Here we go. And the Cards will take over first and 10. And the football back in the hands of the Arizona Cardinals. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. There's a flashy move by Fitzgerald. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going go, out of bounds. Let's go, let's go. It's a gain of 34. So that about the shortest pass a quarterback can make, but it winds up going for a bundle. Yeah, let's face it, in the stats, it sure looks like a heck of a throw, doesn't it? <laughs> it's almost like in baseball, when you get that little Texas leaguer that turns into a double. You would think that you hit it off the wall. Big time play for him on a short little pass. Smith catches left side. That catch good for only a couple. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football. And getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. Eight yards to go on second down. A give to Anderson here out of the gun. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Back in Arizona, second quarter action. It's the Cardinals in possession as they've got it with a third down coming up. Out of the gun, here's Warner. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. He found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. This one will sail out of bounds. It will depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? But it definitely was excellent, wasn't it?
Now a play fake here on first down. He gets it complete to Jackson. And all the way up to the 47-yard line. A big play that time for Cleveland. Well, that'll help get you out of danger so much for playing it conservatively back towards your own goal line. That aggressive mentality, sometimes you can use it, and they did there against a defense who probably thought to themselves, there's no way they take a shot here this deep in their own territory. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. He'll drop to throw. Right side caught by Jackson. And he'll take this from one 47-yard line to the other. A gain of six. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. Second down at four. Now a give left side. Brown with it. Looking for a crease. Can't find one. Stop at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. I think what we just saw their partner was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. They're going to look to throw. On the catch, it's Crowder. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic? for not much gain than what we just saw there. Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what'd he get out of it? He sold the sizzle, he just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, what, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. There, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25 to Will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement. Down on the scoreboard, maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Now a first down throw, Warner. And that's going to be incomplete. And now following the incomplete pass, we'll get a timeout here for an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Warner. That's complete to Bolden. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. The Cardinals on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and five. Now Warner. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, the team would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. 
from the pistol. They run with Anderson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. Here's second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Well, it's caught on the right side at Smith. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Warner. He finds his man complete. That's Gray. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they convert on third and three with a nice gain of seven yards. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the gun, Warner. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And the Browns are going to take you over at their own 41. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. the football going back over now to the Cleveland Browns. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. For the Browns, good starting field position as they have it first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They defer to Brown to start the drive, and he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. We remind you in just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Back to throw. Looking left side, he's got it complete. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Back 
to throw again. That's caught by Jackson. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. All right, let's just kind of walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. This one caught by Crowder. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. They go play action here on first down. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Touchdown! A 22-yard oh, touchdown grab. And the Browns add six to their lead. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half, and that'll give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So this drive spans seven plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Well, the Cardinal offense is going to take over late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. to the air here after the INT on the last drive. This is Smith with a grab. The Cardinals going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So one play and they're already just shy of midfield. Order to throw. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Go. 
Here's Warner. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. Now the Cards going to call another timeout, their second, as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And with a third and 13 here, the defense in a dime look. To throw, Warner. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. Here is Matt Prater now. He's got the leg for this as he holds the NFL record with a 64-yarder back in 2013. And this will be spotted on the other side of the field. It's a 61-yard attempt. Come on, baby. The long-distance shot before break comes up empty, but now Charles flipped the script. Time for likely one more play as field position becomes an issue. Yeah, when you talk about field position, remember, if this kick is missed, the ball comes back to where? the spot that they snapped it from. So field position becomes a factor. I think at this spot, you might also want to think about throwing the Hail Mary. You know, put the ball up in the air. Maybe you can get six out of it instead of three. Yeah, see what happens. They'll run on first down. It's Brown. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Browns. And their offense has been in top form so far, especially their passing game, as it's helped push them out to this big halftime lead. Meanwhile, for the Cardinals, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. second half kickoff and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway from a yard or two deep here comes a return and they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. And the Browns offense getting set to go to work here to start the third and Charles they got the lead put your coaching hat on here now what's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They'll try and start this drive in the air, and this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. 